What's going on, y'all? We are here in Las Vegas, Nevada, with the one and only Artemis Scantilides. Artemis, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm really excited to, that we were able to meet up. And... Absolutely. And if anybody isn't familiar with the podcast and the show from a couple of years ago, we had quite the extensive conversation about the more or less the entire history of your come up in the fitness industry mm -hmm. and in a uh, fortunate series of events. I ended up here in Vegas just for the weekend. Artemis is actually here. Living. Well, obviously we're we're in we're in, we're in my home. <laughs> yes, this, this isn't this isn't a hotel. This this is our home. So tell us, Artemis, in our living room, <laughs> how you ended up in Las Vegas of all places. Well, uh, Eric, my boyfriend, my significant other, he had ended up having a really great opportunity. He's an athletic trainer to work as a head therapist for Cirque du Soleil. Um, and we had been running our business for five years and it was getting to the point where I was gone a lot, I was traveling a lot speaking. Um, he was there manning the ship pretty much on his own. Um, and I think just where it came with running our business, we were getting to the point where we had, we've been down that route and it was a great experience, but I think that we both were at a point where we wanted to move on to what was next. And I know that for about the last year that we ran our business, Eric was very much missing being in the rehabilitation setting and working as an athletic trainer. And, and so he had this opportunity to come up and he, he applied for it and went for it and he ended up getting the position and it's a head therapist position supporting Zumanity out here in Las Vegas. And so we closed up our gym and so that he could take advantage of that opportunity and it everything just sort of fell into place it was just we were it was a combination of we were both ready for the next thing and then this this opportunity came up at the right time and he ended up getting it and just everything fell into place and and we also for a couple of years have wanted to move somewhere warmer than boston right since right. we got slammed with that snow in i think it was like 2015 seven feet in one month that was like sort of the turning point for us when it came to the winter and right, came to right. like boston winters and snow so we had been wanting to move somewhere warm so that was just like a bonus too so that was like all right this is kind of fulfilling many things that we wanted in the long term um, so now we're both out here in vegas and eric's working for cirque and i actually just got a position as a performance conditioning specialist for cirque du soleil as well i interviewed for that um, so I'm, what I'm doing here right now is I've been building my online business. I'm primarily online. I have, um, I've been building that pretty well since I've been here in Vegas. And then as well, I'm, I'm also working, um, I'm just about to start. I haven't started yet, but, um, I did accept the position as a performance conditioning specialist, which is essentially a strength coach for Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. And, and I'll, I don't know if they'll have me designate on one show or how they're going to work that, but that is that would be determined shortly in the next week or so. Absolutely, yeah. and a uh, very unique opportunity, uh, especially when uh, both you and Eric have the opportunity to obviously pursue a very, a very similar opportunity, but um, I'm just glad that you weren't so busy that you couldn't see someone a little bit further down on the athletic <laughs> totem pole like myself um, but of course, uh, I'm getting ready to do a, a series of competitions and recertifications and things like this. And it's always so important to keep yourself sharp, mm -hmm. regardless of if you're a coach, trainer, fitness enthusiast. Um, it's just something that as iron sharpens iron, you absolutely must make sure that you have people who are better than you keeping an eye on what you're doing. So. Uh, long story short, that is why I am here, making sure that I'm not getting too far off the rails with my own training, which can be tricky because, uh, as probably most everybody who's watching this is familiar, uh, Artemis is a uh, team leader. Yes, I'm a Strong First team leader. In Strong First. Yes. And, and I'll be leading my first team at the end of March in, oh, really? in LA. Yeah, at the LA Strong First Level 1 Kettlebell Certification. Ah, excellent. March 24th to the 26th. Yeah, I'm super excited. So yeah. That'll be great. So for someone like uh, myself who's been training with kettlebells for quite a while, but I have shifted a lot of my 
focus into barbell training, powerlifting, um, for a number of reasons, but not the least of which being powerlifting uh, competitions. And marrying the heart style kettlebell approach with training for uh, maximal strength and hypertrophy, functional hypertrophy for powerlifting purposes has been an interesting experimentation, mm -hmm. um, an interesting experiment and uh, something that I have found a lot of good synergy with, but not without its, um, not without the need for some smart programming. And certainly uh, you have some extensive experience in both uh, barbell training and, and kettlebells. So maybe tell us a little bit about how one may benefit the other or how someone, either the fitness enthusiast or the coach, might look at kind of bringing these worlds together a little bit into a training program. One thing I noticed when I started training with barbells was um, when I started to get very, when was that, 2017 or like 2015, the end of 2015, um, I, one thing in terms of carryover that I noticed were the tension techniques from the hard style kettlebell training that directly apply to barbell lifting because you need to have that tension, that tension helps you to lift that more and you're going to have more weight on the barbell so it helps you to lift even more weight with the barbell so that was a huge carryover and um and along with that i noticed like when i from bench press uh so when you do a kettlebell military press you use your lower body so it's really important for you to use your legs your glutes and really drive your feet into the ground similar to the barbell press whereas you are using your feet even if you are, even if you are heels up, you are, as you are pushing that bar, you're pushing your feet into the ground to help to get that weight up. And your glutes, if you are benching correctly and you bench something heavy and you do it correctly and you use your glutes properly, your butt's going to be sore from bench. Oh, yeah. So um, I saw a lot of similarities in, in those areas. So that was a really great carryover. And since I've been training with the barbell and combining that with a a combined programming of barbell lifting and kettlebell lifting. The kettlebell serve more as an ex of an accessory movement, those those movements of an accessory movement to the barbell lifting. And it helps you, since barbell lifting is, it's they're all bilateral movements, the, the unilateral movements with the kettlebell, it helps you to build that unilateral strength that translates to those bilateral movements. So um, I definitely find that they, they work very, very well together. There is definitely a synergy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, that kind of leads me into uh, the next point. Obviously, you know, you were mentioning with closing up shop out in Boston. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're here all the way across the country. Uh, something that I think is very uh, important and valuable that uh, you do is workshops. Mm -hmm. You obviously have the... Uh, I am not afraid to lift workshop where mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, you do cover the bases of kettlebell, barbell, bodyweight calisthenics. For in I'm not afraid to lift, I cover um, kettlebell and bodyweight. So I haven't gone into barbell. Uh, that barbell was planned for, um, I have a retreat planned in May for I'm not afraid to lift. And I partnered with Julia Leduski. She's a competitive power lifter and physique competitor, and her specialty is barbell lifting. She's been doing it a lot longer than I have. She's been focusing on the barbell a lot longer than I have. So I partnered with her so she could teach the barbell lifts. Um, it's something that just in a one-day workshop, I haven't had, I haven't been able to, um, I haven't been able to incorporate that with the kettlebell and the body weight. But it could definitely be like. A, the one day 2.0 yeah. the next level <laughs> getting the barbell lifts you know you bend to level one you bend to the kettlebell and you bend to the body weight okay so now let's cover the barbell and let's let's talk about how to put everything together so that is definitely something that could be coming in the future so thank you <laughs> yes absolutely well that's certainly why i brought it up you know <laughs> obviously i think where we are in this day and age when we're looking at the fitness industry and and the ever increasing um, quality of information that is accessible to even the, the lay person or anybody who's remotely into strength, 
there's a lot of stuff that you should probably ignore, but there's mm -hmm. also a growing amount of stuff that is very, very high quality. But of course, nothing beats a little bit of that in-person coaching. Um, obviously, if there's somebody who's qualified in your local area, hire the person. But if not, you could always go to, where's the retreat going to be? It's in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, Phoenix. So mm -hmm. uh, you could always fly into Phoenix and hang out with Artemis in that capacity. But um, certainly, I think we're at a time where uh, bringing schools of thought and training together uh, is going to be, I think, what the fitness industry needs specifically the strength-oriented fitness industry needs um, in order to really start providing the type of service and the type of value that uh, fitness enthusiasts and athletes need. So uh, having an open mind and seeing how techniques from one particular mode of training apply to another is uh, it, it can't be it can't be overstated. Yeah. Now we have the obvious example that we just talked about with uh, kind of like hard style kettlebells and, and power lifting and I'm um, sporting a tactical strength challenge t shirt where that's kind of you know the order of the day. But kind of bringing this back to a example kind of out in left field mm -hmm. with what you're doing now, you and Eric are doing now with yeah. the Cirque du Soleil athletes. Um, and granted, we're still kind of at ground zero with with y'all's involvement there. But right. in general, what can you tell us about the approach that you might take with these very, very unique athletes? I think um, so. One thing in particular is they do a lot of they have a lot of partner acts mm -hmm. and um, they are lifting other humans a lot. And with that, the kettlebell is an excellent tool for them to work with in their training. Because um, if you think about it, you know, a 48 kilogram bell is like, it's like a hundred pound person, right? So um, it's, and just the way it's shaped, it's, it's, it's just this asymmetrical weight, it's this uneven load with the way a human body is. So it's, uh, the kettlebell as a tool itself is great for these artists to, to work with. And then, if you're thinking, if you think a lot about, let's say, let's think about the trapeze artists and and the aerialists and how they do a lot of single arm hangs and, and they are working on those those unilateral movements, right? So they're they're not constantly in this. They're probably never, <laughs> you know, in a in a in a bilat doing a bilateral movement yeah. in their in their um, in their act. So uh, I think the the kettlebell is a very relevant tool for them to train with to make sure that they are diminishing any asymmetries that they have and they're building strength in that unilateral pattern. Yeah. So I, I think that could be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's just so very, very interesting. And I like, we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, what you guys are up to, uh, here on the way over. Uh, it's just always, it's always great to have somebody obviously that we're all somewhat familiar about, we're all familiar with the benefits that we have derived from our mm -hmm. particular style of training. And there's always that air of curiosity of how might this apply to XYZ demographic? Right. And um, yeah, just really excited to see uh, all the good stuff that you and Eric are gonna do with those guys. And yeah, we're really excited. And then, you know, like I was talking to you earlier about different movements that could be relevant to them, like traveling swings and, mm -hmm you know, bent press, you know, they, they do, if, if you watch their various acts, you know, they do have a lot of times where they're holding people overhead, they're stabilizing a person overhead in a very odd position, like, like maybe in a bent press position. Um, so I think it, it is very relevant. And yeah. one thing, you know, back to powerlifting, I was just thinking of beyond the techniques, one thing that I noticed when I started powerlifting was the strength carryover. I spent so many years building strength with the kettlebell and body weight that when I immediately, when I got into barbell lifting, I was able to deadlift 250 pounds, which is more than two times my body weight. So yeah. it's the carryover, it's not just the technique carryover, but there's definitely a strength carryover. If you build that solid base with the kettlebell and body weight, then you can go into 
a tool like barbell lifting where you're pushing and pulling more weight and, and really be able to do it and really surprise yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, very cool. Well, obviously, uh, Artemis, if anybody is uh, unfamiliar or curious with the entirety of your backstory, we'll certainly have uh, our last interview referenced. Mm -hmm. But, um, and we've touched on a lot of this uh, thus far, but what is on the horizon for uh, the uh, workshop side of things with what you're doing online and, and with your own training? So right now, since this move to Vegas came up and I had the retreat planned in May, I, hadn't, I don't have any other lift workshops scheduled for this year. So, uh, but that is something that as I'm settling in, I, I will be scheduling more of those. So I don't, but I just don't have any scheduled right now. I didn't want to put anything out there during the move. Uh, so the biggest thing right now that I've been focusing on is building my online training business here and that's been going really well and then now the the immediate priority is definitely focusing on Cirque du Soleil and my position there and I'm looking forward to teaching at the Strong First Kettlebell certification at the end of March and I'm sure I will get other lift workshops on the schedule this year in the next you know month or two after I settle in a little bit in this new position at Cirque and uh, I'll definitely let you know when I have those scheduled. I do, I, I had a request from a colleague who's in Utah at Evolve Fitness. Um, so there's, you know, that's out there. So I've had some requests for them and I've just been holding off because I just wanted to make sure that I had all my ducks in a row, so. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, certainly, uh, let me go ahead and apologize for my disheveled uh, look, but of course, Artemis just put me through my paces uh, I would say that certainly if um, you're a strength coach, uh, specifically in the Strong First uh, school of things, and you find yourself uh, in a long or a short weekend out here in Las Vegas, Let uh, me know. <laughs> you certainly know who to uh, give a call mm -hmm. to if you uh, need a little bit of remedy from you know all that fun Las Vegas type stuff. So. Um, Artemis, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time, uh, your hospitality here in your, your home gym. Um, it means a lot, it means a lot. And I think that's, what's, uh, special about our community and maybe our corner of the fitness industry is that, uh, it's person driven and it's driven towards a goal of, uh, mastery, not only over the old kettlebells and barbells, but also uh, taking control of our health and our strength. And you are doing more than your part Thank you. to further that mission. And uh, yeah, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I think it helps to, for us to just build a really nice community and that's what it's about. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, anything uh, to close out, where can people find out more about you and what you're up to online? So you, my blog is still kicking, ironbodybyartemis.com. And um, I'm very active on Instagram and Facebook, same thing, ironbodybyartemis. So just look for me there and follow me there. And I've been posting, I post daily, if not multiple times a day, tips and, and information. And, and you get updates to my workshops and, and where I'm teaching as well. In those places. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, cool thing, Artemis. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Hey, likewise, likewise. And we'll mm -hmm. talk again real soon. All right, sounds good. All right, bye.